students have access to Think Central so they can find resources for them to take a look at in the library. They can find assignments that were assigned by the teacher and they can see their scores on assessments and take those assessments. So when a student th clicks things to do, there might be an assignment that's waiting for that student. Uh, they can click my library and see the, their textbook and some of the activities that are associated with their textbook. If they enter into that textbook, it looks very similar to what you are using in class with the students. And from here, the students can navigate to the lesson that they are on. Let's say we're going to Unit 4, Lesson 10. And under the Chain Links button is Resources. And here you'll find links to the Homework and Remembering pages, uh, the lessons from the Student Activity Book, the Destination Math, which is an activity for them. Another activity is iTools. So all of these are available for the student to, in case um, they miss an assignment, they can download the page. If you want to direct them to an activity when they're in the computer lab or assign it for them when they're at home, these are all made available through the Think Central Access for a student. Students can also go searching for a particular item if you needed them to search in Mega Math or something like that. Now, how do we set this up? To set up a class in Think Central, it's simply clicking on Classes and Students. This will take you to a page that lists the Manage, class pa Manage Classes page. You can also find that up here, these tabs. Um, if you hovered over that and went to Manage, it would take you to the exact same page. You may, if you're a classroom teacher, have a class that's already created for you. It usually says, eMath for elementary math or something like that with your name and it's been kind of like auto created. You can see I created another class um, and that may be because I need it for another activity. Um, special education uh, teachers have created multiple classes. Um, there are many reasons you might want an additional class but you usually get started with one. You can add another class under add. I'm not going to go over that but it's simple. Just kind of fill in the blanks and go from there. I'm going to click on this class this allows me to edit the information for this class. And for starters, we want to go down here and define what is available for the students. So you remember the student had access to his student activity book. Well, we want to check that. There's actually two of them in this case. This is the old activity book. It doesn't say student activity book in the title. It has SE in parentheses. Um, I'm not going to use that one. I don't recommend using that one. That is the old book in this case, but it's available. This is a resource that we don't use, um, but these two, or excuse me, these three we're going to use. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a checkbox in there, and now all students that are assigned to my class, they will have access to those materials. So let's get some students. We do that by clicking Assign Students down at the bottom. Here you will see a list of all the students in your school. Uh, this is a very long list of all the students and I have them all blurred out because um, they're actual students. So I blurred them out. But uh, you could go through here one by one and find your students for your class, but we can make it a little bit easier by clicking the drop down and isolating the class that you're in. In my case, we are in grade five. So we're going to click to grade five. And then when I do find, now I have a shorter list of students to work with and I can go through and find the students that are in my class only. So I know that Beverly is one of my students, so I'm gonna click and I could click add and that would add Beverly over there. Now I can make this a little bit easier because I know that Brienne is one of the students, so I could click her and I could scan down and see that this is another one of my students. If I hold the control key, the control key down, I can highlight multiple students at once. And so now I could get all of these students that are in my class clicked at once. And I could go through the entire list and then just do add. And you can see it'll add a bunch of students at the same time. Let me finish adding all the students to this list. And there we go. That's everyone in my class. You can see the whole list there. And, and now I'm finished. I've assigned the resources for the students. I put the students in my class. Everything is okay. Um, by the way, if I do get a new student, I'll have to, once they're in the system over on this side, go and add them to my class in Think Central and so that they can have the same resources. Now I'm done, so I just simply click Done. And it'll give me a prompt. Are you sure? Yes, I am. 
and it saves that material. And now this class has everything assigned so that my students, when the next time they log into Think Central with their credentials, they all have access to the resources. I can later go up to the assignments tabs and assign them a particular assignment, maybe something from Mega Math for them to do, or I could create a test for them to take. Uh, they could take like a unit test form B online and it would score it. So these these uh, resources are there. Uh, at the very least, they have access to the book and they can print uh, um, um, a homework and remembering sheet. Maybe it got wet in the kid's backpack and they want a copy of that. So this is uh, what you need to do to set up a class in Think Central so students have access on their own. Thanks for listening.